solo hiking can be an incredibly rewarding experience. So I hope these tips will help you to get outside and tackle your own solo hikes. Tip number one, share your itinerary. This might just be the super organizational person inside of me, but whenever I go on a hike, I will make an itinerary. And I can show you an example of one here. So I'll make a table just on Google Docs. The first column will just be the date. The second column will be what I'm doing. And the third column will just be some notes, like some addresses or phone numbers that I might need. So just quickly, you can see that on the first day I drove to the holiday park where I was staying and I've got the time there. So that was roughly a six to seven hour drive. Day two is when I left the holiday park and drove to the actual car park of the hike. And then I was catching a water taxi to actually begin the hike. And then I've got day one, which is the actual walk, the estimated amount of kilometers and the estimated amount of time. So I pretty much just go along so I have a rough idea of what's happening each day. The best thing this does is it kind of cements it into my head. So I'm not surprised about a particular distance that I might have to walk one day, or I'm not worried that I'm going to forget an address that I meant to go to. Today I have got about a four and a half hour walk. And of course, when you've got this itinerary, you can print it out and take it with you and also leave a copy with someone or send it to them digitally. It's super important that somebody knows where you will be or where you should be at every part of your trip. Number two, you can't have unfinished business. For you to fully enjoy and fully be immersed in a solo hike, you cannot be thinking about the things that you should have done before you left or the things that you are going to do when you get home. To give you an analogy, pretend that you just bought a new laptop but you have work in half an hour's time. So you go to work and you spend the entire time at work thinking about how excited you are to get home to set up your laptop. It means you were not present in the entire day that you just had. So when you go on a solo hike, it's really important to be in it. And I don't think I'm quite in this hike. The only thing that's keeping me going is this beam of sunshine. Because there's nothing worse than something distracting you or pulling you away from this time that you've created for yourself especially when you are in the most beautiful place, outside. And this can change from having a focused mind while you are packing so you don't forget anything, or having a focused mind while you are walking so you can stay alert and watch where the path goes. But overall, having a clear mind will maximize the benefits of solitude. Number three, choose an easier grade hike. I'm sure other countries have the same thing, but Australia has the Australian walking track grading system which will rank tracks from grade one to five based on your experience, terrain, and directional signage. One being the easiest, five being the hardest. So this can act as a guide to help you choose a trail that will match your level. It is of course worth doing your own research into a track because sometimes it might have a high grade and scare you off even though it's not that bad and vice versa. Personally, I do know how to navigate with a map and a compass, but even though I possess this knowledge, I still don't choose tracks where navigation to this degree is required. Because if I'm solo hiking, the last thing I want to think about is which way does the track go? So I do recommend choosing an easier grade hike, especially if it's your first solo trip, just to alleviate some of that pressure. Number four, fill out the logbooks. Some hikes you go on will have a logbook for you to fill out. You can provide information like your name, some random comments, and your hiking plans. Normally I fill this out anyway as more of like a personal memento, but of course it can act as a safety precaution to let people know you had made it to that particular location on that particular day. Saw toes but awesome experience. Mission accomplished. And it's kind of just fun to read through people's comments, so always fill out the logbooks if they are there. Number five, remind yourself of why you were there. We all have varying reasons of why we wanted to go on a solo hike in the first place. Maybe it's because we wanted to challenge ourselves. Maybe it's because you prefer the independence to do things your own way. Maybe it's because of the mental clarity that nature provides. Or maybe it's simply because no one else was available to come with you. Hiking is just as mentally fatiguing as it is physically fatiguing. Oh my God, I'm so exhausted. And sometimes it's hard to keep your spirits up when you are hiking by yourself. So before you leave, pinpoint the exact reason or reasons of why you wanted to go on this solo hike and continuously remind yourself of this along the hike. And it will help you maintain your resilience and determination while on the hike. Number six, don't share real-time information on social media. So unfortunately in today's world, sharing real-time information about your whereabouts can potentially put you at risk. 
And that doesn't just mean that someone has the potential to come and confront you in a remote location, but it also means that you are letting people know that you are away from your home. I did have the campsite to myself last night, which was both cool and eerie at the same time. This is usually very easy for me because 99% of the things I capture are on my cameras, not my phone. So I have to wait until I'm back home anyway to share anything. Obviously this is a very negative way of thinking, but if you are by yourself, it's just for extra safety. Number seven, know about the relevant flora and fauna. This is kind of hard when there are billions of species of everything on this planet, but try and give yourself a little crash course on anything that might be harmful in a particular area that you are going to. If you see a huntsman spider crawling on your tent, even though it looks like he wants to eat you, he doesn't. And it's nice to be able to instantly recognize different spider species. And even though some of this might sound like common sense, we could be exhausted, we could be dehydrated, so I think it's very smart to brush up on the area's wildlife and plants beforehand. And remind yourself of how to react in case of any encounters. I think this is particularly important if you are hiking in a different country or a different state. Number eight, carry a PLB. A PLB stands for Personal Locator Beacon. If you find yourself injured or in danger, activate this device and it will send your location straight to emergency services so they can come rescue you. It sends your signal via satellite so it will still work even if you don't have cell phone coverage. Now of course you've got companies like Apple that have brought out their new phone which has an emergency function so you also don't need cell phone coverage to contact emergency services which is amazing but you are still relying on the function and battery of your phone. You might accidentally drop your phone in the water or your spare battery bank runs out. And last night my battery pack went completely dead. So bringing along a PLB is the smartest safety decision you can make and you can even hire them if you don't want to fork out the money to buy one. Number nine, trust your instincts. So instinct by definition is a way of thinking, feeling or behaving that is not learnt. So it's this presence that comes from within. So if something doesn't feel right, listen to that feeling. You don't like the look of the clouds or there is a bit of track that you don't feel comfortable going over, you can turn back, it's okay. And trusting your instincts doesn't just mean safety aspects, it can involve your personal enjoyment. If you are not feeling it, try again another day. And going along this point is to know your limits and take breaks when you need to. So trust your instincts and prioritize your safety and your mind when you are on your hike. Number 10, take small steps. Not literally, you can walk at whatever pace that you want to, but I'm talking about taking small steps in your preparation. So I used to know a lady who wanted to build her confidence in going to the gym. So she would set her alarm, she'd wake up in the morning, she'd get dressed, she'd do all the things that she needed to do to get ready, she would exit her front door, and then she would go back inside. And that was just her first step in her plan of going to the gym. So you can spend one month of your time preparing your gear, the next month spend your time preparing what food you might take. Remember, you can't ask anyone if they have a spare band-aid, so really take your time and go slow with the preparation for your hike. Start out by doing some small day hikes by yourself, progress to an overnight, progress to a multi-day. Do all the prep work in small stages so that when you get to your hike, it's just you and the trail. I have made a video on the pros and cons of solo hiking if you wanted to check that out as well, but I do hope that you got a little something out of this video, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.